Hey, yo, viewers and viewers, my name is General Red Stratist, and welcome to Stillwater. I believe this is a sort of horror visual novel. I got it off itch.io. It's one of those kind of free games that you can get off there. You just sort of name your own price if you want to give some money to the dev and all that. So, um, I believe this actually follows a sort of private investigator in terms of its story and all that, with like a strange case or something. You know what? I don't know too much, uh, other than it's not too long, maybe about half an hour, there or thereabouts. We'll see. At least, I think that's what it said on the H.I.O. page. Let's just throw ourselves in. Uh, this is a work of fiction. The resemblance to any real-life people is purely coincidental. This game contains depictions of horror, mature themes of violence and strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, consider that your disclaimer, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is uh, made in Renpy, I do believe. Caretaker. I'm sorry, but I can't stay here anymore, Nina. I feel like I'm going crazy. Hm. Okay, first thing I thought of was <laughs> The Shining, for some reason. Uh, calm down, if we can just talk it out. That's the voice of Nina. <laughs> so many strange things keep happening after another. Every day there is this damn dripping sound. I thought it was just something leaking at first, but... I check every faucet, every ceiling, every pipeline, and still... Still, I hear it everywhere, constantly echoing in my ears. Over the water. I find random pools of water just appear out of nowhere, just like the dripping. But it's at night. It's at night when it comes. I don't know if it's my paranoia, but I swear I could hear footsteps walking along the hallways, walking on pools of water. They walk, and they walk, upstairs, then downstairs. And, oh, Jesus Christ, okay. Yeah, sure, sure. And upstairs, and downstairs, 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 and upstairs, and downstairs. I had just enough breath to say that whole thing. And it goes on, and on, and on, and on like that. But somehow it does come to an end. And it ends, all in front of your grandfather's room. I know this is a lot, but you have to believe me. No matter how many times I clean, it just won't end. I can't stay here any longer. I'm sorry, Nina. It's okay. I understand. Thank you for taking care of my grandfather. Nina, please listen to me. I don't know what's happening around here, but... The woman on the phone cautiously looks around before speaking again in a hushed tone. Ugh. <laughs> Ominous in the background. Something terrible is lurking through this house. I don't know what it is, but please, as soon as you get back, take your grandfather and just leave this place. I can't just leave, that's my home. Please, Nina, this place is not safe. Does, uh, does, does my strange voices actually heighten the tension or do they undermine it? Who knows? I don't know. Oh, wrong voice. I don't know what you saw, but I can't just leave things like this. <laughs> that shadow figure. It's my home. It's my home. Hmm. Dinner. Oh, sorry, diner. 7am. Amid a foggy morning, there sits a man by the corner of a booth. He drinks black coffee and, depending on his mood, occasionally orders a donut. Also, I think, incidentally, there might be multiple endings to this. And today, it was just black coffee. Okay, yeah, I think this is our character. Ugh. And maybe I should give him my sort of 1950s American sort of uh, <laughs> private detective sort of voice. Yeah, I swear, I've never seen that amount of paperwork in my life, dollface. A freaking mountain worth of it. You're a valuable member of the day, sir. You're a valuable member of our team, Hugo. My foot. I find to believe that I was bamboozled into joining their agency. Huh. Hugo Oloron, age 30, takes a good look at his cup of joe and chugs it all in one sitting. He then continues to grumble to himself about last night's gruelling work at the office. Yeah, I really need to find a different job. As he contemplates his poor life choices, he looks out towards the early mist. There was something inherently terrifying about the fog to him, how it engulfs everything and nothing. Even if it disappears, it always leaves behind traces. Proof of it remaining. Yeah, even in a quaint little town like this, I can't even run for my fate, I guess. Hugo finally stares at the compiled newspaper clippings he put together. Some of them from recent events, but mainly all were past headlines of missing person cases. No matter how many times I say this, it's still just hard to look at. Fixating case after case, he can't help but remind himself that there is a reason for all of this. An all too personal reason. Seeing strange things comes with a price. Yeah, in the end, I'm the one doing this to myself. Uh, who's this, then? Sounds rough, man of a drawing. An annoyingly familiar voice interrupts his train of thought. He slowly looks up to see the one responsible, although reluctantly. 
Oh, Jesus, hello there. <laughs> Good morning, Hugo. Hugo scowls and turns away from him. He then gathers the files and shoves it back into the binder. Meanwhile, the tall man takes this as an, as an initiative, which I'd say invitation, rather, and sits at the opposite end of the booth. He greets the waitress passing by and orders himself the hefty body breakfast special with an extra plate. I feel like I had to say that, had to really enunciate it quite loudly. As usual, the waitress is happy to oblige and goes back to the counter to relay his order. The man then looks back at Hugo. He sees the empty cup and the now jumbled newspaper clippings, all the while Hugo is trying to ignore him. You really should eat something with that black coffee. Not ordering any donuts today. I'm f wait, wrong voice. I know he went to that gravelly caretaker voice again. Yeah, I'm fine, Noah. I'm just not in the mood, okay? Not even a little. There is a momentary silence between them before Noah disturbs it once more. Well, too bad for you. I ordered a big breakfast for the two of us. Meow, yeah, too. Well, it looks nice enough, I guess. Look, you got sausage, you got eggs, bacon, friggin' pancakes. What's supposed to be the uh, stuff in the foreground, though? Not entirely sure what that is. Weird little, like, potato y bits? I don't know. As if the world could grace Noah with an even more perfect punchline, the food arrives. Now, yeah, why the hell did you order for the two of us? Just eat what you want to eat, don't worry about me. Whoa, this looks so delicious, right, Hugo? Even listening to me? Come on, we both know that if you don't eat now, who knows when you will, I'm not about to let you faint again. So, open wide. Noah de Leon, age 27, a natural-born charmer who's just as equally persuasive as he is threatening. With a pensive look, Hugo finally gives in and eats the generous spoonful without further complaints. Yeah, it's good. Right, good food will always help cheer you up. Yeah, damn him, I got swept away again. Oh, by the way, the chief will be out for a business trip. She mentioned it will be for a couple of days. Yeah, when did she tell you this? I didn't hear anything about it. Yesterday, I think. Yesterday? She told me to start out of cabinets yesterday. She didn't even mention anything about a business trip. I guess it was a pretty sudden one. Well, I mean, she did tell me to tell you. But looky me, I know where you go every morning. You know what? I'm not surprised anymore. Well, what do you want to do? We technically have the day off. I'm going to head back to the office. There's a couple of boxes I didn't get a chance to sort. In that case, I'll come with you. Why? You can just rest for the day. I pass up this opportunity to get to know you better. Quit it. After their enlightening banter, the two of them finish their breakfast, pay for their meals, and head to Hugo's car. <coughs> oh, gosh. Sorry. I hope that didn't blast people's eardrums out. As Noah opens the door to the passenger seat, he notices a bloodhound, notices, rather, a bloodhound sleeping inside. <laughs> that little guy. The big dog stirs at the sound of the car opening and lazily stares at Noah. Well, I'm sorry, big guy. Yet it closes the door while trying not to make too much noise to disturb its occupant. Meow, yeah, Colby. At the sound of his name, his heavy lidded eyes slowly peek to see who calls for him. It is his one and only partner, his human. As he finally realising who he is or where he is, the old bloodhound stirs up from his sleep, pounces at Hugo, and proceeds to wag his tail uncontrollably. Meow, yeah, good money again, Colby. Had a nice nap old spot. Colby, eight years old, Hugo's most faithful and loving partner in crime, has the biggest tendency to just sleep all over the place. Noah, who is witnessing all of this from the back seat, chuckles to himself. He's amazed and slightly defeated at Hugo's sudden surge of energy. No, oh, it doesn't matter how many times I try. When it comes to boosting up his mood, no one can beat Colby. Well, great to know you have a big dog, Agency 750AM. The three headed back to the office, the space just the same as Hugo left it. A decent, organised mess. To his credit for the amount of boxes he painstakingly went through, he believes he did a fair job. Albeit, it could have been better. Wow, you really outdid yourself, Hugo. It looks less crowded. Now shut it, will you, old spot? Now I said I was going to get to it. Thanks, boy. Before Hugo could continue to give deserved head pats, he notices someone. A woman stands timidly, peering outside from the store. Is it a dame? I hear this dame was troubled the moment she walked into my office. She had a decent smell of rose water, but I could tell my instincts were kicking in that something was amiss. <laughs> the woman appears a bit frantic. Disheveled and wearing ill-fitted clothes, she appears to be distressed about something. When she finally makes eye contact with Hugo, she immediately rushes in. I'm sorry. I know that the claw sign is up, but I saw you come in and I... Are you alright, miss? I need your help. My grandfather. He, oh, it is Nina. I had a feeling it was going to be Nina. I think I might be right. Before she can continue, Noah swiftly intervenes. It's okay. We'll hear what you have to say. So please, why don't you take a seat? Noah gestures to one of the empty chairs. The poor woman hesitates for a moment before heavily sighing in relief. She then walks towards the corner of the room and sits on the sofa. 
Could you start off by telling us your name? I'm sorry for earlier. My name is Nina Mortimer. I need help watching over my grandfather tonight. Meow, yeah, watching over your grandfather? What do you think I am, a babysitter doll face? Yes. I'm sorry, Mrs. Mortimer, Miss Mortimer even, but I don't quite understand. Is he in danger? I'm afraid he is. <laughs> quite exclamation marks. <laughs> yeah, Miss Mortimer, if that is the case, wouldn't contacting the police be better? No. I've tried requesting their help, but all they gave me, they all gave me the same answer. There's nothing they can do about it, they're useless sods. If only I knew who Louie was. Yeah, Louie? Need a, fid need a fidget at the name. She looks to the side before reaching out from her bag for an antique letter. Reaching out for her bag, that should probably say. My grandfather, he received a cryptic message the other day. It didn't come with an address or name at sender. However, the only thing I did pick up were last and it were name, even. As she hands over the letter, Hugo notices her hand slightly shaking. Now, yeah, whatever lies in this note must have shaken her this badly. Delicately, Hugo removes the content of the envelope and unfolds it. At first glance, it looks like any normal written message. A person named Louis asking the other, Henry, to come meet him by the lake at midnight, needing to share something important with him. However, what's eerily striking about this letter is not the message itself. Rather, at the bottom of the page, a sentence far more disturbing is written. I am coming for you, Henry. Oh. Okay. Okay. Meow, yeah, were there any other letters like this? Yeah, a few of them. I thought it were a sick joke at first, but this one. This one were different. Up till now, I'd never heard of anyone by that name. Not a relative or family friend. But they clearly know who my grandfather is. If I don't do something about this, I'll lose... I'll lose him too. Just by uttering the words alone, Nina breaks down. Hiding away her tear-streaked face, she begins to quietly sob to herself. As an act of comfort, Colby sits closely to Nina while Noah fetches tissues for her. Hugo, on the other hand, is puzzled. Yeah, it's going to very well could have been a prank, but she seems certain. So that whoever or whatever this Louis person is, they're coming. Do you want more tissues? I'll do it, yeah. I'll take on your case. For a moment, silence fills the room. Only stares are directed at Hugo until Nina finally stands up and walks towards him. You'll take it. Hugo simply nods. Thank you, thank you. You don't know how much this means to me. Meow, yeah, we got to help, miss. Nina, Nina is fine. Well, Nina, we'll do our best. Nina slightly smiles at Hugo before reaching into a bag once more and taking out a note. This is me address. 4970 Church Street. I'll be sure to greet you once you get there, detective. She politely bows once more before heading to a car and drives back home. Once out of sight, Hugo turns to look at his cluttered desk. Still messy, but presentable. Now, yeah, I guess I'll have to sort these out later again. Car, 5.30pm. No are you with us? I feel like we should, uh, you know, all go. <laughs> from the ongoing downpour to the quiet homes of the car, they sit in silence. Still miles off from their destination, Hugo constantly checks the rearview mirror. Noah, who usually chats his ear off by now, sits completely still. He looks out to the pressing, passing streetlights, reserved and distant. Yeah, you're a lot quieter than usual old sport. What's wrong? Uh, that's a surprise. Have you been looking at me, Hugo? No, you idiot. Usually just talk a lot, that's all. So do you miss me talking a lot? Just saying. I didn't want to offend Nina earlier, so I get quiet until she finished. But it's her last name that caught me off guard. Have you heard about the Mortimers? They're a pretty distinguished family. Well, they used to be. Yeah, what do you mean? They've been struck with so many tragedies that over time people began to believe they were cursed or something. Every other year I would see a headline on the local news about one of the family members' deaths. And you know what's strange? All of them have been labelled as accidents. No foul play, no nothing. Just another unfortunate event for the family. Maybe I understand why she wouldn't go to the police. She probably thought they'd perceive her as paranoid or hysterical. Or worse, crazy. Oh god. Just dropped my hot water bottle. Didn't mean to do that. I can't imagine all of this for Nina. And most of all, who knows what we'll find there? Yeah, is that why you decided to come with me? Well, partially. I'm more worried about you, though. Think of it this way, I'm the appointed driver. When you decide to do some pretty reckless shit, I'll be there to drive you to the local hospital. Yeah. Besides, two are better than one. Yeah, exactly. I was fine with Colby coming with me. <laughs> I like that dog bark. He just lets us know he's in the back. Well, have you heard that three is better than two? Yeah. Well, don't knock it, Hugo. You're probably going to be uh, thankful for it in a bit. Whoa, okay. It's an old-fashioned spooky house. 
Passing through countless dirt roads and steep cliffs, the estate reveals itself beyond the evergreen. Nestled and tucked away from prying eyes, it stands tall, looming from a distance. Hugo and Noah can only gaze at the sheer scale of the manor as they parked adjacent to Nina's car. Wow, and to think she came all this way just to request us? Took us more than a couple of hours to get here. Yeah, maybe she really didn't have a choice. What do you mean? Come on, she's waiting for us. No. Oh. Immediately after exiting the driver's seat, a sudden sharp pain weighs heavy on Hugo's chest. Grasping tightly at his coat, he begins to gasp for air. His gaze hazes as he leans close to the car. Like a fish drawn out from sea, he desperately heaves. But this achy harbours pales in comparison to a pain far more excruciating. Is it the house? No. Something far more sinister. He feels it. Someone is watching him. A piercing gaze fixed on him, like leering at a bug and waiting to strike. I'll never forgive you. <laughs> okay, sure. Now, what the hell? Damn it already! I need to hurry or else... Hey, are you alright? Noah calls out to him, snapping him out of his fixated trance. Colby nudges his head against Hugo, whining with concern over his partner's well-being. Yeah, did you hear that just now? Hear what? Their yeah, voice. It was so close to my ear, I... Is everything alright? Oh, I'm fine. Don't mind me, Darth Ace. I'm just a bit winded out from the trip, that's all. I'd be happy, I'd be happy to make you coffee at very least. If it's no trouble. No, not at all. It's the least I can do. Once again, this subtle uneasiness from Nina surfaces. But before Hugo could get a chance to look further into it, she walked off towards the front porch without saying another word. Are you sure you're alright? You sounded like you were choking earlier. Yeah, I said I'm fine. Besides, we're already here. We can't back out now. Listen to me. Oh, wait, wrong voice. Listen to me. I think you should... Noah abruptly cuts his lecture short as he notices Nina stopping by the front door. She stands there silently, as if contemplating something. I, I know this may sound rude, but I didn't get a chance to know your names. Well, you were pretty out of it when you walked in. I'm really sorry about that. No worries. This is Detective Hugo Lerone. His assistant, Colby. And I'm his second assistant, Noah de Leon. Uh, it seems so surreal, just like a cartoon. <laughs> Nina, what was that laugh? <laughs> Nina meekly smiles before turning away from them. I haven't been quite honest with you, Detective Lorraine. That's how I'm going to pronounce it every time. Just like before, as if carefully choosing her next word, she decides that in this situation, words are not enough. You'll see for yourselves what I mean. And with that, Nina enters the house, leaving the three to follow behind. Hugo is about to enter through the foyer when he feels a tongue on his arm. Don't forget what I told you. If something happens, let me know right away. You'll be the first to know, I'll spot. And with that, Noah releases his grip on Hugo. They proceed to head in, not knowing what awaits them beyond the door. Well, looks like Grandfather's over there. Greeted with a brightly lit hallway, Hugo notices that, notices that the interior is just as grand. Adorned with floral accents and antique paintings, it exudes an elegant charm found only in a resplendent house such as this. However, Hugo notices something even more distinct than the splendour. This house is much more terrifying inside than out. Please, come this way. Bracing themselves, they enter the dimly lit drawing room. At first glance, Hugo could not discern the silhouette situated at the far corner. However, on closer inspection, he now understands the reason for all of Nina's unsettling vagueness. Grandfather, we have guests. <laughs> I don't like your eyes. You're a grandfather? You don't even look old. Sitting on the armchair is a young man. What is happening? He's dressed in a white-collared down dress shirt, tucked in with black slacks and black penny loafers. <laughs> it's amazing how creepy you can make something. Because normally that wouldn't be a creepy shot, but it's the fucking eyes that do it. Staring only at the window, the young man sits there dazed with little acknowledgement of the people around him. Still, motionless, like a doll. Grandpa, these are people I spoke of, you bugger. This is Detective Lorraine and his two assistants, Colby and Noah. They're going to help us. Even after... Oh, wrong. <laughs> Just went straight to Nina's voice. Even after introducing them to the head of the Mortimer estate, Hugo and Noah could not help but feel unnerved. The man before them is supposed to be frail and older than any of them. And yet, here he remains, forever unchanging. Is he a vampire? Something like that. 
He's like, suck the blood of innocent people and he becomes youthful. Forever young. Or, or maybe the notes he received... Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Theory time. I have no idea if this will be right. We'll see as the game progresses. What if he sold his soul to the devil for a youth or something? And so the notes are actually from the devil. <laughs> or a demon. Something like that. <clears throat> and now the demon is coming to collect, so to speak. Forever young. They've come a long way, so I'll be making some coffee. Would you also like some, Grandpa? The young man still does not reply back, never glancing at Nina or anyone else in the room, only fixed on the rain. I'll be sure to make a cup for you too. She then timidly gestures to Hugo and Noah back to the foyer. Bearing more questions, the two follow Nina outside. But before they leave the drawing room, Hugo takes one last look at the young man. There is an all too familiar air about Henry Mortimer. His eyes, yeah, no shit. <laughs> They're similar to his own. Oh, what? Whatever he must be longing for, Hugo knows it will not end well. What does that mean? Okay, I'm just going to say right now, despite the, you know, fairly sort of cartoony visuals, there's actually a bit of atmosphere to this. I think the choice of music is just right in the background. Man, you know, that man. Yep, he's my grandfather. The one I asked you all to watch over. I know this is hard to believe, but... Nina draws something out from her pocket. It's an antique picture of a young man with slick back hair, wearing a luxurious suit. He appears to be poised and refined. A complete contrast to the current Henry Mortimer. There isn't much to go by, but I swear he's the same person. Then why does he look so... young? Well, that's the question, isn't it? It happened a few nights ago. I was on my way to get a cup of tea when I heard a loud thud coming from my grandfather's room. I was worried that something fell over, so I went to go check. When I opened the door, I found him collapsed on ground. I rushed to help him up, but when I did, he looked so different. So many things were rushing to me head, and yet he felt so familiar to me. He wore the same clothes that my grandpa wore that night, and his face, I recognised his face. He just looked younger. That were also the same night I found that letter. It were next to him, already opened. I'm sorry again for all of this. No matter who I went to, they either said something were wrong with me or my family. With everything going on, maybe they're right. The pools of water, the dripping sounds, the letter, and now this. Maybe my family is really cursed. Nah, yeah, they're not. Because it's unreal. Detective? I think we easily get too involved in believing that sort of thing exists, dollface. In reality, the ones who fixate on it, fees off of it. Rumours, doubts, lies, all those things are, are what they want to... Blah, blah, blah. Let me try that again. Yeah, rumours, doubts, lies, all of those things are what they want to become real. Deep-rooted emotions like that can't possibly be healed or fixed right away. But like a curse, those emotions struggle the people down with them. Personally, I think you were caught up in all of this. But I assure you, we'll see this through. For you and your grandfather. Thank you. Good. Now, first priority is to find out more about Louis. Nina, the letter you showed us back at the agency. Do you have it with you? Oh yes, it's here. Do you mind if I borrow it for a bit? I'll be sure to give it back. Of course. I'll check upstairs. Noah, you and Colby check the ground floor. Got it. Before they leave to do their own investigations, Hugo grabs a hold of Noah's shoulder. He leans in, close enough for Nina to not Nina to not hear. Keep a close eye on Mr. Mortimer and Nina, especially Nina. Okay. I'm counting on you. You too, boy. Colby will be fine, right? <laughs> Who knows? With that, Hugo heads upstairs, starting his investigation. I feel like you're kind of doing the uh, classic horror movie cliche of splitting up, which is not necessarily a good idea. After searching vigorously through each of the rooms, he knew his findings would eventually lead him here. This is it. Hugo walks towards the nearest lampshade and opens it. Dimly illuminated, he sees the extent of how lavished this part of the house is. From customised drapes to the vintage furniture, everything here exudes that extravagance. But much like the interior Hugo has seen so far, he finds this one in particular reeks of it. Plastered from wall to wall, a sense of gloom lingers. It's as if the room itself is mouldering, despite its preserved nature. I need to hurry. I don't want to stay over too long. 11.50. Did you find what you're looking for, Hugo? He searches and searches, still with no sign of anything. I like the little rudimentary animations, as though he's searching the room. Not one thing pertaining to Louis. 
Damn it, nothing. It's as if he cleared out everything. Just blank everywhere. No, it has to be here. I'm just missing something. He ponders again before remembering the letter. It's the only proof Louis exists so far. I'll try to read it again. Maybe I overlooked it. As he takes the letter out from the envelope, he notices a change within. Bearing no foreboding threat at the bottom of the page, it looks just like a regular letter. What the? If you can't come, then I understand. It's pretty dreary, after all. Ah, but if I can ask one last favour of you, could you keep my locket? I know this is selfish of me, but I'd like for you to have it. I'd be happy knowing it's with you. Thank you for everything, Henry. Forever yours, Louis. Uh, what is going on? This is the same Louis. I thought he was the cause of all this. I don't understand. Oh. Without warning, the sound of a click can be heard across the bedroom, as if something unlocked itself. Hugo turns around and sees, at the foot of the bed, a chest. Unlike the other furniture, it's dark, and rustic features have not been maintained well. Left to rot on its own. Praying himself, he opens the chest. Uh-oh. Inside, scrambled together are bunches of notebooks and small trinkets. Hugo continues to rummage through when he stumb stumbles across an old newspaper article. Young man found dead by the lake. What does it say? An unidentified young man was found on the morning of... whatever date, three days prior to his death according to police. Ruled out as, su ruled out as a suicide, police have claimed that, that the troubled youth drowned himself. Wait, that would mean it was a suicide then. I think the phrasing is a bit odd there, but okay. This certainly is a tragic loss. An unfortunate event indeed. So and so comments. No claim of his body has been made yet. Yeah, Louis. By the corner of Hugo's eye, he spots a bright glint buried beneath the clutter. He reaches for it. A locket of brilliant gold shines unblemished, retaining a timeless lustre. Inside, it safeguards a picture of a young man with glasses, smiling brightly. This must be the locket that he was talking about. It's so pretty. I'm surprised that it still shines like this. And this picture? Did he put this here? No, it might have been Henry. But why? Why would he stow it away like this? What should I do? Oh. We have a choice. Can I... I can save. Okay, we're going to do that. Right. I'm going to go back into the game. I say take the locket. Right? Fuck it. Throw caution to the wind. See what what's the worst that could happen. <laughs> I should probably hold on to this for now. He was about to put everything back into the chest when he feels a wet and cold sensation crawling up. He's like, uh oh. I think I did bad. Can I just get rid of that? What? Water? A pool of water relentlessly spreads across the floor, already seeping into the chest. Damn it, no! Suddenly the light shuts off. A scream is heard, followed by a myriad of shouts. Hugo is about to call out to Noah, but stops at the sight of pale feet before him. Whoa! Whoa. Looming over him stands a tall and ominous figure. His face is shrouded in complete darkness, devoid of any human emotion. He appears as a young man, but Hugo knows that it's far from it. No. This very thing is trying to imitate a human form. Trying to be human. Hugo could only stare back. Paralysed with fear, he's forced to watch the horror as it slowly creeps toward him. It's just like before. The sensation of someone staring at him from within. Oh god. Are we going to see a face? Okay. Maybe not. But this time, it's drawing nearer. Inching ever so closely. The words to call out to Colby or Noah fail to reach out. Lodged in his throat, he struggles in pain. With his breathing shallow, he tries to force his body to move. And then it stops. Looking down at Hugo, filled with nothing but malice and contempt, it speaks. It's going to show us the face. Oh god, that said don't get in my way, I think. All of a sudden the door to the bedroom slams shut and the entity disappears. The tension from his body finally releases its agonising grip, and he gasps desperately for air. Well, the fact that it's watery makes me think it's a fucking revenant or something. It's come from the lake. It's the young man who drowned or whatever. His vision blurred and breathing jagged, he staggered towards the door. 
He yanks at the handle several times, but it's tightly jammed. Ah, fuck! Noah, Colby! To his dismay, he's only greeted with silence at the other end of the door. Damn it! From a distance, he faintly hears the sounds of Colby's relentless barking as he gets further away from the house. Hugo rushes towards the window. He tries to pry it open, but just like the door, a heavy force prevents him from doing so. Now, yeah, fuck this! Frantically looking around the room, he spots a nearby chair. Without a moment... Without a moment sooner? I'd probably say something like, without a moment to lose. Hugo grabs the chair and starts to strike the window. Bit by bit, the window cracks get larger with each blow, splitting off smaller pieces. Now, what the hell is this thing made out of? Still trying to catch his breath, he musters all the strength he has left for a final blow. Damn you, just break already! Clearing out the remaining glass shards, Hugo peers his head out to see any railing he can grab hold of. However, he discovers instead that the wall adjacent is covered in ivy. Despite how heavy the rain has drastically become, he reaches out for it, grabbing a handful of the vines. Carefully, he climbs out the window, gripping tightly and making sure he doesn't lose his footing. Yet to his look, the patch of vines he clutches start to tear away from the wall. I should probably say to his misfortune, but I know what you mean. Out of desperation, he struggles to find his grip on another, but fails when his hands slip out of reach. Ah, shit! Okay. Clambering wildly as he loses his grip on the ivy, he crash lands onto a thicket of bushes. Air forced out of him, he heaves uncontrollably, trying to even out his breathing. But even that is laborious. An immense pain spreads across not only his back, but his entire body. Ah, God, I'm getting too old for this. You're only 30, man. <laughs> Although his body screams out in pain, he forces himself up. There's still time. I can do this. I have to do this. With staggering feet and haggard breathing, he makes his way to the place where it all started. To the lake, where this tragedy starts and ends. What are you going to find there? God, it's past midnight now. I love the rain effects. <laughs> Finally entering through the park, Hugo calls out to Colby and Noah. Colby, Noah, where are you? He hears faintly the sounds of barking and echoes of people yelling in the distance. He rushes towards the echoes, guiding him through the downpour. With his heart racing and blood rushing to his head, he finds his way to the lake. Drawing closer, he sees Nina giving chase to her grandfather. Unfortunately, she doesn't get too far as Noah stops her. Grandpa, stop! Grandpa! Is Grandpa trying to drown himself in the lake? Let me go, me Grandpa, he's... Nina, please, it's dangerous. You'll get hurt too. I don't care, ah. I don't want to lose anyone anymore. It's at that instant Hugo trudges against the water, pursuing in Nina's stead. Hugo? No, don't. Please fall deaf to his... Please falls deaf to... Should you say fall deaf on his ears or something? Not even the whines and wood cries of his partner could make him turn back. Determined, he trudges further in. Nearing the deep end, he sees Henry Mortimer gazing directly at the abyss. He looks even more frail and dishevelled, as if all the life had been drained from him, surrendering it all to the lake. Before Henry could lean in, Hugo reaches out and tugs at his arm. Now, yeah, Mr. Mortimer, listen to me. Nothing is waiting for you down there, so please, come out to the shore with me. Motionless and unresponsive, he still stares deeply into the water. There are so many things we cannot afford to lose in our lives, and you're one of them. To Nina, you're all she has left. She needs you, Mr. Mortimer. Hugo felt it. A slight jolt from Henry's arm, as if stirred by the mention of Nina. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Those eyes. <laughs> he slowly turns to face Hugo. Nina! I don't know what voice that was. Was that my attempt at doing an old man voice? However, just as cruel and violent as the storm, Henry jerks back, wrenching his arm away from Hugo's hold on him. All of this is my fault. If only... If only I got to Louis sooner, then none of this would have happened. Henry inches ev even closer to the edge. Louis, I'm sorry. I should have... Should have what? Gone in his stead? Gone with him? You know that wouldn't resolve anything. Not for you or Louis. I... I read what he wrote here those years ago. He understood if you didn't want to come see him. But the thing is, Mr. Monomer, Louis never thought of anything less of you. The locket is proof of that. Louis' locket? Yeah, it's a symbol of his, of his love for you. That's why. You don't have to shoulder all of that pain by yourself anymore. We can talk about it. About you and Louis. All of it. Together. Hugo extends not only his hand to him, but a promise. 
A promise that Henry had yearned for so long ago. I well, see his eyes became normal. A way to forgive himself. He hesitates at first. What fool believes in a deserved forgiveness? Such a thing doesn't exist. And yet, despite everything, Hugo still reaches out to him. To a stranger. Maybe he can be forgiven. Just as he was about to reach out for Hugo, a hand slithers around Henry's instead. Ugh. Its arms will naturally contort around him while its head perches on his shoulder. This thing, this Louis, is no longer pretending to be human. With piercing, cold green eyes, it glares directly at Hugo, mocking him, cursing him, wishing nothing but despair. We can be saved. We can be forgiven. There is only one true way out of this. I will share with you the most happiest of endings. Before Hugo could reach out for Henry's hand, he disappears into the water. Meow, Mr. Mortimer! Without hearing the anguished cries and desperate pleas, Hugo dives after him, into the abyss. <laughs> what? Plunging into icy waters, Hugo feels shocks running rampant throughout his body, like spikes continuously piercing from his legs to the tip of his fingers. Fiercely and unyielding. His chest tightens and his heart races as he begins to kick his legs, hoping whichever way he goes, he'll find his way to Henry. Swimming deeper and deeper in, he sees faintly a figure slowly descending into the darkness. As he finally gets closer to Henry, long snake-like arms stretch across the void and grab Hugo's neck, violently squeezing all the air out from him. He tries desperately to wrench its hands away, but with each struggle, Hugo's movements begin to weigh heavier and heavier. Louis. Where are you, Louis? He's looking for Louis? Digging deep into his coat's pocket, he grasps tightly in his hand the locket that Henry Captain had long forgotten, holding it out as it shines ever so brightly in the dark. Oh, is this the thing that banishes it? Huh. There you are. It releases its grip on Hugo, and instead reaches out for the locket. Taking this as a chance, he drops the chain and kicks with all his might to grab Henry's arm. With his heart burning and his body screaming, he swims desperately to the surface. Almost there! I just have to... As the lights from the surface begin to blur, Hugo makes one last attempt to reach for it. With his limbs worn out and his energy spent, this is all he can do. Before he loses his consciousness, he notices a figure swimming towards them getting closer and closer, and then everything fades to black. Did we die, or did someone get us? Drifting along with what feels like an endless sea, Hugo courses through wave after wave, not knowing where he's going, or caring for that matter. All he knows is that he's very, very tired. How long has it been since he had a good night's rest? Yeah, it's been too long. Maybe I should take that rest now. I'd like that so much. I agree that you deserve it, but not here. Is this Noah? I'm sorry for startling you. I just wanted to see you before I go. Maybe it's not? Oh. Louis. You've done so much for me and Henry. Thank you. No worries. From a far off distance, a voice cries out to him, beckoning for him to come back. Well, I guess this is it. Take care, Hugo. Are we alive? With his eyes closed and his senses still returning, he feels the constant tugs and licks of a certain bloodhound. Hey, Colby found us. Whining as he tries to wake up his partner. Hugo! He also hears another familiar voice, too annoyingly close for comfort. Eyes shot right open, he jerks up. Confused, Hugo looks around before he coughs up the remaining water in his lungs. Are you alright? Noah starts to pat his back while Colby continues to whine over Hugo. Yeah, what happened? Where's Mr. Mortimer? He's safe. So is Nina. They're both okay. The police and the ambulance should be arriving soon. Yeah, thank goodness. Isn't there more you have to say to me? Oh, Jesus Christ, there was a weird fucking leg spike then. I don't know what that was. Good Lord, did I just skip a line by accident? Let me have a look. Isn't there more you have to say to me? No, there isn't. Okay, we're good. I'm just going to take a um, caution, cautionary save, just in case something else happens there. Um, then we'll continue on. Instead of, thank goodness. I swear you don't listen to a damn word I say. I'm sorry, Noah. 
Exhausted, he lets out a sigh. He then continues to pat Hugo's back aggressively when someone approaches them. Detective Lulul. Oh, Nina. There's someone I want you to... Oh, this is the wrong voice. There's someone I want you to meet. Oh. So this is what you actually look like. Behind us stands an elderly man. Frail in stature, he timidly looks to the side pensively as he ponders to himself. Although his youth has long faded, his eyes are what catches Hugo's attention. They're no longer a piercing and vicious green, only eyes just like Nina's. Yeah, hello, Mr. Mortimer. Detective. I never got the chance to say goodbye to him. I always thought about it every day. What if Louis lived on in this world? What if he stayed a little longer with me? It's because of that constant mindset I dragged everyone down. And I kept hurting not only me, but Nina especially. I was the one who kept hurting her, the one to blame for all of this. But you, someone that I've never met, still went out of your way to save me. Not knowing my burdens or my faults. Thank you. Hugo reaches out to Henry and smiles brightly at him. Now yeah, it's my pleasure, sir. But before he lets go, Henry tugs at Hugo's hands one last time. I hope that someday you too will overcome it. Hmm. The next day, 8am. We're back in the office. <laughs> We're just back to the grindstone, are we? Well, good morning, Hugo. You're bright and early. Yeah, I'm on in. With much fervour and haste, Hugo resumes writing on his notepad. Although by closer inspection, he looks like he's going to combust any minute. Are you writing up the report? Without looking up, Hugo responds back. Yeah, for the most part, you still need to write yours too. I will, but since I haven't had breakfast yet, and I don't like eating by myself. Off to the diner, I guess. Oh, did you bring food with you this time? Yeah, let me guess. Two is better than one. Bingo. Wow, Hugo. You're really catching on. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, shut it, will ya? I swear if only I hadn't fallen off in the goddamn window, maybe our report would have been shorter. Before Noah could, he, could begin to cut the bacon, he pauses at the mention of Hugo's report. Oh yes, by the way, mind telling me what happened to the Mortimer's window? Ah, uh, I broke it. Well, that's obvious to me. What I don't understand is, why is it broken? Do you know how much it costs to repair a window like that? Ah, I know, I know. It was really dumb of me. I'm sorry. Besides, I told Mr. Mortimer, Mortimer about it before we left. Oh wait, this is the wrong voice. Yeah, besides, I told Mr. Mortimer about it before we left. Honestly, I was expecting an earful from him, and also the bill. And, surprisingly enough, he said it was okay. So what? You just called it a day after all that? Thank you so much, Mr. Mortimer. You broke it. You pay for it. Meow, yeah, would you chill? Of course I'll pay for it. But each time I kept insisting, he just shrugged it off. Said that we already went through a lot for them, so this was nothing in comparison. Ah, <sighs> you know what? He's right. After all that we went through, I deserve at least a nap. Hugo puts down his pen and proceeds to head for the couch. Hugo puts down his... Oh, Colby follows after him. Wait, what about breakfast? I'll eat it later. It's nap time now. Heavily sighing, Noah sets aside the food on his desk and joins the other two at the couch. Ah, I'm getting old. I mean, you are old. He's 30. He's not that old. <laughs> Shut it. Colby whines, asking for head scratches. Ah, sorry, boy. Silently, Hugo scratches the back of Colby's ears as he leans closer to Noah. You know, I'm glad that he came along yesterday. Oh, what's this? You getting chummy with me now? Yeah, I call it chummy or whatever, but I really mean it. If he hadn't saved us back there... Look, I told you before. I'll be there whenever you get yourself into reckless shit. Besides, did you say this was nap time? Get some rest. You deserved it. You too. A calming silence fills the room as the three fall deeper into sleep. No big parties or celebrations, just each other's comfort and sharing this small but rewarding night's rest. Ah, I got the good end! There we go, a night's rest! Thank you for playing! Well, thank you for making the game! That was uh, an interesting little title, wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Had a very uh, interesting little uh, premise to it. I like the visuals, and it did have a bit of atmosphere to it as well. And I like the music and the soundtracks, they really fit the mood of it. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed watching Stillwater. So, we got the good ending. Um, oh god, I just dropped my pot water bottle again. It's getting cold now, actually. I should probably make myself a fresh one. In fact, actually, no, it's 5.30 in the evening. I should probably uh, start looking to make myself some food. So, um, I'm curious. 
I, I guess even since this is the only choice in the game, if you left the locket, you probably would get the bad ending where you don't ward off the beast and it probably kills you. I would imagine that's what happens. But if you want to see that, go and download the game for yourself and play it, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, yeah. Um, good. Yeah, hope you enjoyed Like I said, I certainly enjoyed it myself. I thought it was a heartwarming little story. Likeable characters and a great tension and atmosphere. So, Facebook and Twitter links down below, along the link to my propaganda channel for anyone interested. And if you enjoyed, a like is, of course, always appreciated. More than that, I'm signing off now. Goodbye, everybody. Did I fucking make it? Am I safe? Kisaragi. Oh, God. Shimitsu, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? Looks like you made it. This isn't the place for you. You're gonna need a ride home. But I don't have a home. Wait, what? You don't have a home? What? Don't worry. Just call home now. They should know when to pick you up. Call them now before you get lost in the tracks. What? 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 Is my character homeless? Or am I literally in purgatory? Because that was going on here.